Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. On today's episode of Draw My Bit Life, we have a girl named Silky O'Reilly. She's got pretty normal stats, and she was born in Dublin. Her mother is only 20 years old and still a university student, and Silky doesn't know who her father is, though she does get a half-sister in her first year of life. She also gets measles, which is really dangerous at such a young age, so I sent her to the doctor, and luckily Kyle Taff was able to take care of it. Her mother takes her to get vaccinated just a little too late, and then she gets lactose intolerance, which I don't think the doctor can fix. Sulky's luck finally starts to turn up when her mother gets her this super cute cat named Max. Now, I decided that Sulky was going to be a little bit on the evil side. The last time I did an evil run through, I unfortunately was unable to really kill anybody because my character was so dumb. But I have faith in Sulky. I think she could be just the one for our first serial killer run. We're trying to get that deadly ribbon. Now, unfortunately, her mother wouldn't pay for her university, but they did give her a scholarship, so it's really no problem. She also gets her driver's license just in time to start driving to school, and I had her ask for a more expensive car, which her mom actually does. Questionable parenting, but very lucky for Selkie. I also had her go to the casino because she doesn't have a lot of money, and I thought maybe this could be a quick way to make some. She makes an easy hundred bucks and then pulls an all-nighter, graduating with a degree in psychology. I decided to have her double down on her psychology degree and go to graduate school for a couple of years, and she got a scholarship for that one as well, so that was really lucky. I also had her get a part-time gig being a lab assistant at the university where she was studying so she could make a little money. Right after that, she graduated graduate school and was released from that part-time job, so she was ready to get her real one. She applied to be a crime scene technician, which I thought would be really, really helpful if she does start killing people because then she can start hiding evidence and no one will know that it's her. She also meets a guy at the library named Ryan O'Hara who's really crazy, so I thought he'd be perfect for her. And BitLife pretty much confirms that for me because, first of all, they go to a movie theater and like it the exact same amount, and then she also gets pregnant almost right away, so clearly they're getting along. I decided to keep the baby, and he immediately proposes as well, so Silky is um, on her way to a very normal looking life. Normal from the outside, that's the important thing. I wanted her to be that type of serial killer anyway, so this is actually perfectly in line with the plan. She decides not to take a prenup because she doesn't leave marriages by divorcing people. And she also decided to keep her own name, even though I did think that Mrs. O'Reilly O'Hara is a hilarious hyphenated last name. Her childhood cat Max dies at the age of 17, so she named her new baby Max in honor of her cat. Straight out of maternity leave, she gets a major promotion, which is really good because kids are expensive, and then she gets pregnant again. I decided that Max would be her favorite daughter and be the only family member she really cared about, so I decided to give all of her will and testament to her daughter. She has a son next, and then right after that, she gets pregnant again. The doctors say she has insomnia, but I think she just has three babies. <laughs> She names her next daughter Eve, and I decide to start getting cracking on this serial killer thing before this turns into a hundred baby challenge instead. I figured for her first murder, she shouldn't do anyone that she knows. Um, she tries to do a drive-by shooting on a drifter, but he fights back, though luckily he doesn't tell the police. Ryan gets her pregnant again, which is making me think that our next victim should be him, just so that she doesn't have to keep having babies. She's getting older, and I know that we have to get started on the murders if I want her to be a successful serial killer. I have her try it again with the same conditions, and this time it actually works. He dies, and nobody witnesses it, so she's able to just continue her normal life like she's just a regular mother slash crime scene technician. I know most killers don't have a totally normal life outside of their killing, so I decide that she should dabble in a few other crimes. I actually really like the burglary minigame, so I decided that Selkie was going to rob this poor old woman. It just really doubles down on her evil on top of killing strangers for no reason. Ryan's out here still trying to make this a 100 baby challenge, but unfortunately she loses the baby, the stress of which causing her to go for her second murder. This time she goes after her friend Sadie, and once again she's able to commit the murder and nobody notices. She needs at least three to be considered a serial killer, so next time she decides to go after Ryan. She's sick of her domestic life and she wants to end it. 
but uh, while he does actually die from this, she does get busted by the cops this time. So unfortunately, we're looking at some serious jail time. She gets 50 years in prison, but uh, she decides that she's not going to wait that long to keep living her life, so she tries to escape. And luckily for us, she's quite a clever cookie, so she gets out. Uh, this does mean she's on the run now, so everything's going to get a bit more difficult. Also, all her children hate her now. I can't imagine why. I wanted her to change her look a bit, but it gets botched. Um, I give her a nose job as well, and that also gets botched. So she is definitely looking different, but not necessarily in a good way. Uh, nobody will let her immigrate, so she tries to go illegally, but that doesn't work out, so she ends up getting captured again um, for felony escape and gets back to prison for 55 years. Um, she decides that she's going to just scoot right out of there once again, um, and hopefully this time she can stay out of the clinker for a bit longer. It's hard to get a job with a criminal record, so I decide to send her to the casino to potentially get some more money. This plan backfires massively and she ends up with a lot less. Her daughter Eve also dies at the age of 13 from carbon monoxide poisoning, which despite her evil ways gives Selkie depression. Her luck starts to turn up when she goes to the library and meets Ryan McGregor, a new potential love interest. Hopefully he hadn't heard about her past husband. Selkie gets a job as a reporter, hopefully able to uh, bend the newspaper away from her sordid case and towards other things, and she manages to kick her depression from her new success. She also gets a haircut, which hopefully will help her look different, though her face being turned to mashed potatoes probably also helped with that. Since her multiple botched surgeries are probably actually more attention grabbing than having a normal face, I decided to send her back in and get those things fixed. I also had her burgle another house since it's been a while since she had a chance to do any crimes, um, though she had to bail on the first one because he had too many dogs. Honestly, the thing about Selkie's life that's the most shocking to me is how normal she's able to make it after she's run from the cops and killed three different people. Like, she still manages to get a job and a boyfriend, and everything is mostly fine other than that her children really um, don't want to talk to her anymore. I was really tempted to give Selkie a redemption arc because I love those and I actually have a really hard time playing evil characters because I feel really guilty, but this is who she is. She's a serial killer, so I had to force myself to keep playing her super evil. I had her burglarize a bunch of different houses, um, even though she doesn't need the money. I mean, I guess if she gets sent back to jail and wants to try an appeal, that costs like millions of dollars, so I guess she kind of does need the money. I tried to get her to emigrate again, but once again, they're really not interested in her criminal, but in their country, so um, fair enough. I felt like she had at least one more murder in her, so I had her kill a neighbor, um, and he did successfully die, but once again, the police uh, found her pretty quick. There's not a cell in Dublin that can hold her, but unfortunately, as far as her relationship, the damage has been done. She's not a real uh, relationship counseling kind of gal, so she decided to solve this problem the old-fashioned way. Unfortunately, he's stronger than her, so her clubbing kind of failed. She's informed in prison that Ryan wants to break up. He says he's going to miss her killer eyes, and honestly, all she could do at that point is wish him well because that was well played. She busts on out of there faster than ever before and once again finds a guy at the library. It's practically like a dating app for her. She also manages to get her reporting job back. Apparently, they don't really do background checks or maybe they just don't care. Um, I had her go on another burglary, and this one is super successful. She manages to carry somehow in her arms a uh, laptop, a desktop computer, a guitar, and a wad of cash, um, and she makes a fair amount of money from that. Uh, she decides to keep around a wild possum that keeps coming into her yard, and after that, she decides to treat herself to some real estate. I thought a houseboat would be perfect for her because she can always go out into international waters where there are no laws. Now Liam is great and all, but she can't get her mind off of Ryan, so she decides to stalk him and um, listens to him sing in the shower right before planning her um, finishing of her unfinished business. Now since he's in the shower, I, I thought electrocution might be perfect, um, and I think that I was right on that because he does get electrocuted and nobody finds out. Selkie is very deadly at this point. I think she's killed five or six people, and I feel like like that's plenty. She celebrates by marrying Liam. 
Since they live on a houseboat, I thought the beach would be a perfect venue. And as for the honeymoon, Coachella definitely jumped out at me, so I had them go there, even though they're both like in their 50s. And she decides to take his name because changing names is actually a great thing to do when you're on the run, so it really fits perfectly. Now, Sulky wants to get along better with her sister and reconnect with her family, so she decides to send her half-sister, Leah, a present. Now, there was really only one choice that made sense, a human skull. Um, hopefully, Leah will understand that Selkie is trying to make peace with her. Unfortunately, Leah is really unappreciative of Selkie's kind gift. Um, she even starts an argument about it, so I think you guys know where this is probably going. Selkie really only has one way of solving problems, and it's worked out for her great so far. Now, it would be difficult for people to prosecute anyone other than Selkie, considering that she sent a human skull right before the murder, so naturally she does get sent back to prison right away. Uh, she also gets divorced in prison because, uh, well, I guess Liam is just not as much of a uh, ride or die as we were hoping. Unfortunately for him, she does get out, uh, which means he will be the die part of Ride or Die. She stalks him in her usual fashion and then decides to go after him, though unfortunately she is not able to commit the murder, maybe because she's getting a bit older. She's also having a much harder time getting out of prison, and it looks like this might be the way that her terrible, tragic story might end, because dang, she tried so many times to get out, um, but it just was not working for her. She kept getting caught up with, and then at age 75, she died while sleeping peacefully. She got the deadly ribbon and managed to kill six people. Um, she spent 22 years in prison and none of her children went to her funeral, which is a bit of a bummer. So that was it for Selkie O'Reilly. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Draw My Bit Life. Let me know what you want me to do next in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much to my patrons, including Bella Story, Kalpampong, Clockwork Construct, Dope Elephant Art, Dr. Casket, Elizabeth Album, Imagine Creations, Ivan Rodriguez, JJ Jade, Joseph Copel, Justin, Carla Tapia, Katie Marigold, Kira Dittard, Live Love Love Love, Megan Claire, Micah Dactyl, Mr. Dr. Pants, Nora Cornelson, Nara Tothep, uh, Okamori, Ollie, Post-It Pixie, Rosie Warlock, Sergeant Pendulum, Spoy, Yardsy Moose, Yaboy ST, and Zoe Stardust.